Joy, sheer driving pleasure. That is what BMWs have always been about and the M cars, they take it up a notch. They've always been the ultimate manifestation of that statement, the ultimate driving machines. And if I'm not mistaken, Suresh, BMWs were the first cars that you ever went sideways in. For sure. The first car that BMW actually made in India, the E90 325i, that was the first car I actually put it sideways. Right, so we're doing something a little different in this video. Today, we're going to be talking to Sirish. He is one of the most experienced journalists in the industry today. And he's been driving BMWs and BMW M cars for, what, 20 years now? Maybe 18 years, yeah, but for very long. And what memories? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Like the time when we took all the BMW M cars that are sold in India, we took them to the runway outside Bangalore at Hosur and went full scent in those. The time when we went to the BIC and I drove a tuned M2 compilation. All the other BMW M cars that I've driven, the M5 compilation, the M8 compilation. We even tell you how you can win one of these. The BMW M8 compilation in 1 is to 18 scale model. We are giving away three of these. So watch the video, we'll tell you how you can win this. It looks sexy just sitting here on the desk and it is even sexier to drive. Yeah, I remember we drove it back when the lockdown was on. You know, we drove it, the M5 competition at the same time and they're absolutely mental cars. Of course, once you're locked in, then to get out in a near 600 BHP sports car, that was epic. It's 50 years of BMW M and we're celebrating with a throwback of our memories of the M cars and SUVs. You do have a soft corner for BMWs, don't you, Suresh? Uh, definitely. Someone wise once said that you must never forget where you came from. It's over 22 years that I've been testing and writing about cars. And in my early years, the dream was always to get a shot of driving a car fully sideways. We'd see those sideways pictures in international magazines and dream and then try to replicate it, of course, very unsuccessfully back then. And then BMW came along. I remember the first time I drove that 3 Series, it was a 3 to 5i, the E90. And I sat in our office basement and just kept revving the engine. Wang, wang, wang. A sweet, naturally aspirated six cylinder engine. There was nothing like it. And then I switched off ESP, the first roundabout outside our office, and I went sideways. Of course, those days we didn't really know how to control a car when it went sideways. So it went sideways, the tail danced around and everything. But that's how we started off. And then once we started driving more and more BMWs, once BMW expanded the portfolio, that's when I learned to drive it properly, drive a car sideways. I remember the time when we went to the Chennai racetrack, I think it was the 530D, and there, with the manual handbrake. No, you really could go around sideways around the racetrack. That was epic. And then BMW's M cars came to India in 2008. You must have had an absolute blast, didn't you? Oh, definitely. So it all started at the Auto Expo in 2008. BMW, they debuted their M3 Coupe at the massive pavilion. And alongside, there was the 650i, the 750i. But frankly, we enthusiasts, we were interested in the M car lineup. The M3 Coupe, the M5 sedan, and the M6 Coupe. But your experience of that E90 M3, that wasn't in India. Uh, no. So I had driven the previous generation M3, but not really driven it because when you drive a friend's car, you really got to be careful with it. But then when I first experienced the M3, that was, wait for it, at the Nürburgring, the Nordschleife. We drove the entire Nürburgring Nordschleife and this was a car that was developed at the ring. That's why they were called Ring Rats. And there was so much of motorsport into that car. So the engine, aluminum silicon alloy block, it was made at the same factory that was making the same blocks for the BMW Sauber F1 cars. So it had a lot of connection with the motorsport that was happening there. So the engine is one part of it, but the handling, the way it went around those corners. And before we went to the Nürburgring, I practiced on the PlayStation so you could get the lines and the corners right. But of course, once you're there, you forget everything. You're just focusing on the car, the power at hand. Those days, we were not really used to these big horsepower V8 cars also. So you had to get your mind used to the speed, the turn of speed, the way the corners came at you. 
but the car just everything came together so well that you quickly learned adapted it rode over the bumps and we talks about how the nurburgring is a very bumpy circuit but it rode over those bumps well it was stable there were never any moments where i felt i was going to plaster myself against the guardrails it was an epic experience we did i think five laps and then we did another five laps those were those open days where you could go drive as much as you want or at least until your credit card maxed out uh, buying those tickets for the tourist days but it was super what an experience and that made me a fan of m cars for life the m3 it was also quicker on the ring than the e60 m5 around 3.5 seconds quicker in a lap and now that you mentioned the e60 m5 that is another legend that car had a v10 engine which was formula 1 derived yeah. did you ever drive that car so not when it was launched it was actually many years later in fact once it went out of production that's when we drove it so we had assembled all the m cars to celebrate 100 years of bmw we brought them to the runway outside hosur and over there we had every single m car on sale in india so we had the m3 the m4 the v10 m5 a friend brought it along for the test we had the m6 even the x5m and the x6m so that was an epic birthday party so tell us about your driving impressions of that that car with that engine so before i talk about the driving impressions i must talk about the car itself that was a formula 1 car with four doors and four seats in it it was epic it had so many f1 derived features in it so that s85 engine a v10 engine it had formula 1 tech in it and to think that you're driving a car which has a slice of formula 1 in it up ahead in the nose it just makes your hair stand on edge okay the gearbox not a big fan of that but that engine the way it revved the noises it made when it revved the power that it delivered oh man that was something else it was also the first m car to get those m buttons which you could individually program and now it is common place in all other m cars in fact other brands have taken uh, inspiration from the m button to have their own versions of those programmable buttons but this was the first car to get it it had a head up display now common place but back then head up display was like you were driving a fighter jet <laughs> so it was really cool 18 different transmission settings you could you know fiddle around with it there was so much that you could play around with it but obviously it was the sound at, that it made at full revs you know that is the thing that i still remember sometimes you can still hear it in your sleep empty runway flat foot flat on the floor going bang down that runway what an epic test that was and then after that screaming v10 came the turbo cars there was a turbocharged v8 that came in and this car was on the cover of the second issue of evo india and you actually rated it above the e63 yeah i remember it was a very wet day i went early morning to mumbai to pick up the car it was outside mumbai picked up the car it was the f10 m5 and then we drove it to our what we called temple run which was outside of pune now after the v10 the turbo v8 completely different kettle of fish and like the mad shrieking revs here there was an enormous slug of turbocharged power low down the revs there was mad and effortless performance so easy to go sideways with yeah yeah for sure and then it evolved into the f90 and that f90 got all wheel drive yeah but it still continued to go sideways because beyond you their whole philosophy was that it should feel like a rear driven car in fact even the designs of all beyond was like you look at this design everything sits on the rear haunches and it emphasizes the fact that it is rear wheel drive so even though that m5 was four wheel drive it also had that rear drive character and you could play around with it you could go sideways with it you could be a hooligan with that car i wanted to hate it but the first time i drove it it was on the expressway in the pouring rain and that's when you realize that this added dimension that layer of safety that it gives you it just gives you so much more confidence makes you safer and also can let you play around with the car harness all the performance and the performance was really incredible because this was the first m5 that could do over 300 km per hour 305 km per hour and when you have that kind of power you need four wheel drive to ensure you don't become part of the scenery also to handle all that power to give you that 0 to 100 time of it drop to 3.4 seconds you need the traction of all wheel drive 
yet it was still a pure driver's car. And that engine has essentially become a mainstay in BMW's range. The M6 Grand Coupe also gets it. The M6 had the F10's engine, but in a far sexier package. The 6 Series, it already looked drop-dead gorgeous. And the M6, it was the most stunning fast car money could buy. But back when you did that story, the birthday party story, you also had the M4 on test. Was that more than just a two-door M3? What's that car like? Those days, the M3 was blue, the M4 was golden, so that was a clear differentiator. And it was also lighter, 23 kilos lighter. And the cool part was the standard carbon roof that lowered the center of gravity. Yeah, standard carbon roof. Even the M8, it had a carbon roof and we drove it. Also, the revised boot gave it better aero. It had a beautiful carbon fiber strut brace, a carbon fiber torque tube, 7,600 RPM red line. And it was turbocharged, it was not naturally aspirated. It had anti-lag like a rally car. The Turbo 6 was also the most instantly responsive turbo engine that we had driven back then. It had a burnout mode too. So you stomp on the right pedal, the revs swing up to 3000, 3500 RPM, the clutch engages with a bang, and then you go bananas. But let's keep talking about the engines. These are engines that we know and we love so much. In fact, last year, we also drove it at the Speedfest track day at the BIC, a tuned one owned by our friends. And it's still so much fun. It's so engaging and also demanding because the M2 is rear wheel drive. Yeah, so at that very same track day, we drove another friend's tuned M2 competition. And it reminded me why when I drove the M2 earlier in Europe, it reminded me why it was the best BMW M car of that time. So it was small, compact footprint. It reminded me of the earlier, older M3s before it became bigger and much faster. So responsive. Four doors, yeah. So the M2 competition, two doors. So responsive, so agile. You could play around with it. So you could play around without danger of really overcooking it. So in the midway M mode, you could get the tail to come out, little bit of sideways, little bit of opposite lock, handle it so well, you could control it. It was the spiritual successor to that original M3. And now that the current M3 is almost as big as the previous generation M5, because all of them are becoming bigger and bigger, the M2 competition is still such a sweet car. And I drove it, when I first drove it, no, in Europe, it was with the manual gearbox. Oh man, it was... And you talk to owners these days, they'll tell you that those cars are just depreciating. They don't depreciate. Exactly. It's <laughs> like a Rolex or like an FD. In fact, it makes more money than if you had put your money in a fixed deposit because those cars are really enthusiast cars. They're appreciated by enthusiast people who know they're driving. They know how beautifully it drives. So as a daily driver, a daily driving sports car, and even as a car that you can take to a track day, attack the track, do lap times. This M2 competition, it does so much. You get so many aftermarket parts for it also. You can tune it, you can get more power reliably out of that engine, out of that whole platform. That is just a perfect enthusiast car. Absolutely. Now, let's talk about another dimension of BMW M, the SUVs. So, the X-Drive BMW Ms, these cars were, they essentially redefined what performance SUVs are, right? The X6, it was the first ever SUV coupe. And the X5, the original X5, is actually what put the sport in SUV, didn't it? It was actually a proper car to drive. BMW calls them SAVs. That's what they call them. But the X5 was a proper, proper driver's SUV. The X6M was the first SUV on proper, proper steroids. When the M department actually put that very 4.4 turbocharged V8 under the hood. True, the X5M followed and both these SUVs, they accelerated harder and faster to 100 kmph than the M3, M4, even the F10, M5 and the M6 on the drag strip. Because of that four-wheel drive, the X-Drive architecture, each of these SUVs, it got sportier suspension, that all-wheel drive gave them so much of traction, so much of grip off the line, there was no wheel spin and the success of the X5M and the X6M also spawned M versions of the X3 and the X4 with the six-cylinder engines today. 
Just before the pandemic, in March of 2020, I traveled to Arizona in the US to test the new X6 and the X5M competition. Frightening power, 617 bhp. Torque, 750 newton meters. It was rear bias, the X drive. Staggering was the fact that you could really get it sideways. This was a massive, big SUV, so much of power. You almost get intimidated by it. But once you get the hang of the power, when you step on it really hard over the tighter corners, you can feel the rear come out. And those tyres, like, this, I can't even remember, must have been 300, 315 section tyres. Huge, massive tyres. And still, there was so much of torque, that the slug of torque that you get, that you could put it sideways. Of course, you could control it. It was nuts. And then you remember, we took the X5M here in India, the red one to the Leopard Trail outside Gurgaon. We took it to Leopard Trail, let's say, outside Gurgaon. Proper road, right? You can yeah, drive yeah, there yeah, properly. Yeah. You, can, you need a car that handles well. It's not a very wide road. And the grip, the absolute grip that that car has is unbelievable. I mean, there's a lot of trickery going on in there. You've got active anti-roll bars, all sorts of crazy stuff. Brake corners flat, traction out of corners is mind-bending. You really need to change your driving style to suit the capabilities of the car because the capabilities of the car are just beyond what you're used to normally. And understeer, it does not know the word understeer. It does not exist in its dictionary. Absolutely. And those cars are just unbelievable feats of engineering. They're really, really proper. So, was it during the pandemic that we also got the M8 competition? Yeah, yeah, M8 competition. We also got the M5 competition. And we just had an absolute blast, both those cars. It was so much fun because those days, being locked in at home, the few opportunities that you got to go out, and then when you got near 600 bhp cars, oh god, we really went ballistic with it. That M5 competition, the drifts that we pulled off with it. Um, <laughs> the visuals that came out of that video. I had to make a few apologetic calls also, but that's <laughs> besides the point. But the drift mode, I love the fact that it has to, no, you need to go through that whole process to get to the drift mode or you could just program it into the M buttons. You just punch that red button twice to engage the M2 mode. And then if you have drift mode activated in that, you can then send the car sideways. And sending the car sideways with that kind of power is not difficult. But holding it sideways, holding long control drift, that's when you need everything to come together. So the chassis balance, the way the LSD works, the way the power is metered out, the way you can manage the throttle and also know exactly how much to feed in, when to get off, when to get back on. So hold the slide, control it, do a linked drift. These things you can do with an M5. And, and at that point, all the electronics are off, right? So you need a car that's fundamentally sound yeah. to be able to do all of that. True, you know? and also I have to say that with drift mode, everything is off. So there is no safety net, nothing. So it is you and the car. And that means that the car has to give you tremendous amount of confidence to be able to do that. Otherwise, you're just asking for trouble. But the chassis, sensational. And then came the M8 competition with the same engine. Yeah, with the same engine. But it was a little different to the M5 competition drive. It was not the same driving characteristics. This one was the most beautiful M car, right? Look Easily. at it. Uh, you guys can actually win one of these scale models. Just watch out for the next video. We will tell you how you can win this. And even sitting on your desk, it's gorgeous. Yeah, I don't feel like parting with it, but uh, I think we are committed to giving away <laughs> three of these. So that's the only reason why we will part with it. Now, this one was beautiful, but it was also lower. It was more aggressive. This had the most powerful BMW M engine ever produced. This was also even more sportily inclined. So getting it sideways was easy. Controlling it was a little bit more on the edge because this was more focused towards getting you even more speed through the corners. But in sex so appeal. The wheelbase was shorter. Does that affect the dynamics? Definitely. So that's what I said. The driving, it was not like this was a sexy M5 alone. It was a very sexy car. But the driving was different to the M5. And that's how BMW is it's not like the same driving characteristics across M cars. It is every car feels different and is different to each other. And when you say that, that brings me to the next point that I want to bring up, that you don't need mad power to have fun in a BMW M car, right? 
true that very first 3 to 5 eye that i drove the amount of fun that i had as a young journalist to be able to drive those cars that revy engine that sweet sound the 330i if you remember what a sweet car and then now we have the m340i what a car that what is. a car and as an ultimate sleeper car nothing really comes close so the m340i is the fastest ice car to be assembled in india also the first bmw m car to be assembled in india and on a price to performance ratio it is absolutely unbeatable it has x drive no drift mode yet you can go sideways with it we've done it we've showed it without destroying the tires huh? you can do all of that <laughs> The three series chassis on which it is based, it is balanced. Yet it has upgrades that make it even nicer, even more agile, even more entertaining. Everybody will think that you are in a regular three series, and then when you gas it out, that's when they know that now nah, you're the boss. This is not a car to be messed around with. And the straight six turbocharged engine, an epic motor with such joyful responses. I completely agree and what I love most about the M340i is that it's usable every day. You can legit drive it around as a regular 3 series every single day of the week and then head out and have some fun in it. Uh, superb. What, what, I, I run out of superlatives while talking about the M340i, especially because you get it at that price. Yeah. There are Accessible. faster cars. Yeah, there are faster M cars. But at that price, getting what you get with an M340i, really sweet. But like we said, these M cars are what? helped establish Evo India's thrill of driving credentials and it bolstered our full send image. And now on BMW M's 50th birthday, we have 10 M and M Sport models promised for India. Including the new M4, which now gets 503 horsepower. 503 horsepower. And of course, to harness it all, it gets all wheel drive. To cater to us hooligans, it gets drift mode. And not just that, it gets the drift analyzer. So on the car, on the infotainment screen, it will rate your drift. And if you're not happy with the rating, you can go attack the corner harder, you can drift better, and it'll give you a better score. So it will actually rate your drifts. Yeah, we absolutely can't wait to get our hands on that car. And I promise I'll be a good boy. Let's see, let's see. And we have more in our 50th BMW M birthday celebration. On the Evo India channel, we will run you through the entire history of BMW M. This is something you do not want to miss because it is in that video that we will be running the contest and giving out this absolutely gorgeous model of the BMW M8. Stay tuned for the video drop on the Evo India YouTube channel.